And I was so used to having my lifestyle, being with my kids, being home, having the freedom to do what I want to do. I didn't want somebody else telling me what to do. I call myself unemployable because if somebody employed me, I'd be telling them what to do in the first five minutes. It wouldn't be pretty. I'm unemployable. I, I'm much better as an entrepreneur. Has your life, your dreams been interrupted? Good news. It is possible to reinvent our lives. People are doing it every day, and some are brave enough to share the struggles, disappointments, and challenges. If you are looking for a new beginning, a do-over, or to rediscover your passion, maybe even find a new one, then grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. Interrupted, Act 2, Reinventing Your Legacy, with your host, Coach Lori. Molly Clip is with us. She is the owner, artist, instructor at Carefree Beauty Permanent Makeup. Welcome. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for inviting me. I will say Molly has done my eyeliner and my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever questioned me as to if it's real or not. For instance, at a family gathering, my niece, I said, well, I have permanent makeup. She goes, what? I go, yeah, I have permanent makeup, my eyebrows. And she's like, no, because they look so natural. And the funniest story, because I work on the radio, <laughs> I remember my, this one. <laughs> my co-host, AJ, he was talking about facial tattoos. And I said, well, I have tattoos. He goes, no, you don't. And I go, yes, I do on my face. He goes, no, you don't. My eyeliner and my eyebrows. And it was like more than he could handle. And then he came into the studio and he just stared at me. Mm -hmm. He's like, no. And he goes, whatever made you even think about doing that? And I said, well, I wanted to. But I was at a networking event and I actually won a coupon to get it done. So I went in and he's just like shaking his head, walking out of the studio. Like he's like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> it's funny back when we did use permanent makeup is more the mainstream now with social media. And of course, some of the bad press we've gotten because of people who are not trained to do this, unfortunately, in the state of Washington and most other states, there's no law saying you have to be trained to do this. So there's a lot of bad work and I do a lot of corrective work. It's that unfortunately is but what's given us the claim to fame. And then you get people like me who have get new training every six months. I've got like probably over two, 3,000 hours in training. Just keep up in the game, up in the game. And my claim to fame is nobody knows it's done. Best compliment I can get is I didn't know that it was tattooed. I didn't know. That's always my goal that nobody knows. Well, Molly, we always start with where you're at now and what you love about your life. It's actually interesting because just this month uh, shifted. I used to have two locations and just this month, I'm now exclusively at Salon Zuberance down in Linwood on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. For the first time since I was 17 years old, I am literally have a four-day weekend and work three days a week. I feel like I have a vacation every week. It's just like awesome. That has been so fun to be able to just enjoy it. My husband wrote a text to the kids this morning going, this is Saturday A, tomorrow's Saturday B, <laughs> okay, because I'm not used to having this time. It's so much fun just to be able to do what I love. You know, I tell my clients, I'll never retire from this. Why would I ever do that? Because I, I get to be creative. It's my social outlet. I get to see my peeps, my friends. I get to be friends with these people as I'm doing their brows, eyeliner, and lips. It's just a win-win situation. So it's just, it's just perfect. People can't see you because we're on the radio, but I remember the first time I met you at a network marketing event and you have just this inviting personality. When I saw you, I'm like, I want to be her friend. You just have that <laughs> welcoming feeling about you. I love that you're in a place you love in your life, but it wasn't always like that. And you had to pivot. Can you tell us about that? At 26 years old, I actually started selling cosmetics in upstate New York. At 28, my husband and I moved to Seattle and opened up the franchise for this cosmetic franchise, Salouette Cosmetics. I still use it. I still sell the product. But we became franchise owners, paid a lot of money to become a franchise owner. And quite honestly, not knowing anything, we didn't know anything about business. I knew how to sell. I knew how to book. I knew how to talk to people people, but I had no clue what business was. It was just nothing. The company was very helpful. We had a great time. I got to travel the world. We won trips. My kids, they worked in the business, either in the shipping department or they worked in answering telephones, calling customers, all of these different things. I have four kids, so they were all involved with the business. And my husband worked with me. He did the shipping and the admin and I did the marketing, training and uh, selling. It was a wonderful life. I mean, I got to meet people from all over the world. It was fabulous. And we did that for 
30 years, but the last five years were very tough. There was new leadership in the company. We butt heads and I'm pretty easy to get along with, but she was trying to micromanage me. And at that point in my life, I don't micromanage really well. I knew what I was doing. I knew how to do it. But I think at that point, I look back now going, I needed to move on to something different. I really needed to move. I'm a Christian girl and I prayed, please, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? The answer I got, and I wrote it down, put it in front of me and goes, gather information the way will be shown. So I just started checking things out. What could I do? I could be a sales rep for somebody. I could do this. But I was so used to having my lifestyle, being with my kids, being home, having the freedom to do what I want to do. I didn't want somebody else telling me what to do. I I call myself unemployable because if somebody employed me, I'd be telling him what to do in the first five minutes. It wouldn't be pretty. I'm unemployable. I, I'm much better as an entrepreneur. I had had permanent makeup done five years prior to that by somebody who was a friend of mine who was actually worked with me in Alouette. And she kept telling me, she goes, you should do this. You should do this. And I kept saying, ah, I can't, you know, I, I can't run a company and, and do that too. Cause she was playing with it. She was doing like two or three appointments a week. And I'm like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it full bore. I got to make a living at this. I'm the breadwinner in the family. She finally introduced me to Penny Rudy, who actually became my best friend. We went up in January of 2014 to an introduction class, Permanent Cosmetics. And as soon as I met Penny, it was like five minutes. We've talked about it later. And it's like five minutes. It was like, oh my gosh, I want to know this person. It's like what you said, right? I want to know this person. What she has to say really floats my boat. I'm a numbers person. I am a business person first. And so I started asking her questions. How many procedures do you do a day? How many days a week do you work? What do you charge? The numbers are going in my head going, okay, I could make a living at this. I can make a living at this. So started doing it part-time, still running the company, got a website, built it, did for social media presence, started networking. The company was not happy I was doing it. So I had to do it behind closed doors. They weren't allowing me to do it. They said it was a conflict of interest, which it wasn't, but later find out they were really literally wanting me to get out the door. In September of 2014, kind of had a head to head with the owner. I said, find me a buyer. I'm done. We made the decision that March of 2015, March 31st was going to be the last days owning the franchise. We did a retirement party, February 21st, still not knowing. <laughs> what was going to happen, how we were going to make this happen, had no clue. And the second message I got from God was let the miracle unfold. Three weeks before we were ready to close our doors, the company called and said, we'll buy you out. I mean, we had a big franchise. We had a lot of customers. We had a lot of clientele and they bought us out which gave me a year to get my income back up to what I was used to. So I gave myself a year to get my income where it was. Took me 11 months to get there. Did networking. I met you at networking. I've had an incredible amount of people support me and build me up and help me along the way. It has been a miracle to me how my life shifted and how much better. My husband, a week after we left, he says, oh, I like you much better now. Much more relaxed. Didn't have to work as many hours. I could pick and choose what I wanted to do. I just love that part of it. The only regret I has, I didn't do it 10 years before. That's kind of my story of how I was 58 years old when I shifted gears. Wow. It occurs to me, like you said, I wish I would have done it earlier, but it wasn't until you were getting squeezed out. And isn't that the yeah. truth? It's often we'll yeah. stay until we can't. Do you want to say something about yes. that? Yes. <laughs> and it's true because when you are good at what you do and you are passionate about what you do. I, I've been very blessed that I have always done something I've loved to do. I really have. I've never really worked in a job that I hated. That five-year period of time was a very difficult time. There were people leaving who are my best friends that was really hard because we were like soulmates and talking all the time and helping each other out. And I'm a loyal person. I'm one of these ones, I'm going to go to the ship goes down. I am the captain of the ship. We may be sinking, but man, I'm going to stay. I actually count my blessings that it all happened this way because it literally kicked me out. It kicked me out and made me do something different. Getting out of my comfort zone. I knew how to sell. I knew that I could build the business. I had absolutely no fear about that. I knew I could learn the skill sets that I needed to, to be able to learn to be good at this because I've spent my whole life learning. What class can I take? I've always done that. I was never really nervous about any of that stuff. When we bought the franchise at 28 years old, paid $89,000 for it. I was never afraid. I just knew we could make it work. Just like, okay, I've been blessed. And I've had a, an incredibly, incredibly supportive husband who is always in my corner. Molly, you can do this. You're absolutely awesome. I mean, he's always been there for me. My family has been like that for me. So, but the squeeze came when the owner of the company who I'd known for 30 years, just, I actually 
talk to a lot of my fellow franchise owners going, what do I do? What do I do? Because they were shocked. I mean, we've known each other for 30 years. They were shocked this was happening to me. And I said, what do I say? I don't even know what to say. And one of my buddies, she goes, tell them all the stuff you've done for the company. I did free training for them. I had two company cars given away where nobody else did. I set records that the company had never done before. When I said it to the owner going, look what I've done for the company and this is how you're going to treat me. And his one statement said, that was then, this is now. That was when I knew I was done because I thought, I'm not willing, and this is where I made the decision, I'm not willing to do what it takes anymore to do what they want me to do. And it was just this freeing, freeing thing. I've never been happier. <laughs> that is so amazing. And it it sounds like loyal people will go and go. And then when they're done, they're absolutely done. So when you decided you were done, you weren't quite sure what you were going to do, but did you think about well, what do I love? Or did you go, what can I do? Like, what was your thought process? I had been doing permanent makeup for about seven months prior to when I, when I said I was done, because I knew that I couldn't jump into something. I couldn't leave without having something to jump into. I pay the bills. So I was the one responsible. So it's not like you can just say, oh yeah, I hate my job, quit and I'll find something tomorrow. You have to really think about this. And I had been thinking for five years about what I wanted to do. And those questions you asked is for those five year period of time, what do I want? I knew that I didn't want to travel away from the family. I knew that I wanted to be able to schedule my own time. I knew that I wanted to be creative and be able to be creative with that. I say that if I had started doing this 10 years before, I would have had a salon. I would have had people underneath me. I would have hired people. I would have had a big salon. God knew better. I'm loving working by myself. I have the freedom to do what I want to do. The shift happened five years, I think, before because I was ready to be done. And you're right. You have to ask yourself, what do you want? You got to do the pros and cons. What is it that you want for your life moving forward? I was going into my 60s when this was happening. So it's like, what do I want to do? How do I want to make this happen? What do I want my life to look like? That's where it's all come. That's where it started. And now, nine years later, I'm nine years into it, to be able to work three days a week and have four days off. It's like, I have a vacation every week. It's wonderful. And yet I love what I do. I think that's the key that you love what you do. You said you had a year transition. What would you say were the things you had to kind of walk through? I gave myself a year. My husband had set us up really well financially so that we could have that year for me to build. He had done a really good job with that. That's where networking came in. I was going to network meeting every single week, meeting people, setting up vendor tables, offering free. You knew because you were one of them. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. I would do drawing. Put your name in here if you want to get a free lash line tattoo. A lot of people would come in for a free lash line tattoo and get eyebrows too. And meanwhile, it was building my portfolio. It was building pictures and I was practicing and I kept going to training classes. And back then there wasn't as many videos as there is today for training, which the videos is kind of scary online because you don't necessarily know who the qualified people are. When I'm teaching, I always tell my students, ask me first, let me vet the people that you're going to go get trained under because it's worthwhile getting trained by more people, but there are good ones and they're not good ones. I want to vet them for you. I spent a lot of time really marketing myself. I didn't at that time do any kind of advertising. I had never advertised in Alouette. I had always done it by word of mouth, networking. It wasn't until COVID hit that I actually shifted gears to, I do a little bit of networking now, but I started doing Facebook ads and I have a guy up in Alaska that takes care of it for me. And that shifted my business again. You kept investing in yourself. Yep. And I see people be reluctant to invest in themselves. And it's so important. And when I met you and you did my services, that's what I did love about you. You said, oh, well, I'm going to be doing a training coming up. And now you're actually training people, right? Yep. I train them one-on-one. -on -one. Again, in the industry, there's no training curriculum. So it's basically what you feel they need to know. So I took all of the different information and the things that were good from the different trainers that I had of what I feel a new person. And I like working with the new people, you know, the new babies coming up, what is necessary for them to know what's necessary for them to practice. And a big piece that I have that most people don't have is my 40 years of experience of business. Cause I have a whole training on business. 
of how to start your business, how to build it, how to get a merchant account, how to do a logo, what bank accounts do you need, all the different things that a new person who's starting a business has absolutely no clue how to do. Last November, my daughter turned 30 and a client of mine gave me a suggestion a long time ago. So I asked all the people that knew Maggie that were older saying, what advice would you give your 30 year old self? I gathered 22 people. I took their pictures. They got their statements. I put it into a Shutterfly book and gave it to her as a gift. And I saved a copy for myself because I'm like, I just could have had this book at 30. It would have been amazing. I should publish it. It's really that good. All of these pieces that go together. I just don't want somebody going out there and not knowing how to build a business. And when I got trained by Penny, so I asked her, how many of your people were successful that you've trained? She goes, a very small amount. I said, who are your most successful person? She goes, you. And I have to say, it's not my just my skill set. My skill set is because that's my drive. And that's my discipline for myself that I have to do that. The skill set that I have is the business person I am. Because to build a business, you have to be able to know all the pieces that go with it. And you got to be able to have a mentor. You, know, you talked about getting coaches and keep getting training. One person that I wish that I had done it 10, 15 years before is Debbie Page. You know, took a year with her and what she taught me was invaluable that I wish that I had known 20 years before. And those are pieces of the puzzle. I see in this industry that people, oh, I want to get my eyebrows straight. I want to get this. I want to learn how to brow map. I want to do all this stuff. Well, yeah, that's all well and good, but you got nobody to work on, honey. You got to have the people to work on. You got to be able to have both pieces of the puzzle. I feel like there are so many people that want to teach us marketing, but there's mm -hmm. not so many that want to teach us the business aspect and how to manage right. and run a business. You have had an entrepreneur spirit since day one. So many entrepreneurs fail for that reason. They've got the drive, but they don't know how to manage money. And seriously, we're not taught it. We're not taught it in school. No. So I love that your program includes that. If somebody wants to get permanent makeup or get trained, how do they get a hold of you? Email me at carefree-beauty at comcast.net. You can go to my website at carefree-beauty.com or find me on Facebook or Instagram, Carefree Beauty PMU. I've gone to a couple of your events and they are so awesome because it's networking and it's gifts. It's lovely. There's drawings and wonderful people. Can you talk <laughs> to us a little bit about how that supported you in business? When I started the business, we had a big family home. The bottom floor was my business. That's where I had people coming in. That was my Alouette business. And then it switched over to Carefree Beauty. I would put on events, have different vendors come in. They would paid $25 for a table and brought something for people to share. They could sell. And then they were to invite people and I invite people. I have a very large network circle. Women like to socialize. They like to look pretty. Who doesn't like a party? My goal next is to get my lips done. I know it's not saving me hours, but I feel like having permanent makeup saves me so much time. And I grew up in an era where you get up, you get your makeup on before you face the day. It wasn't until maybe my fifties that I ever went somewhere without makeup. Having this has been for me, mm -hmm. absolute game changer. And I tell everyone, go get permanent makeup. And then people worry. They say, well, what if the style changes? But the way you do it. I don't do fads. I don't. If somebody comes in and they want wing eyeliner, if they're younger and I look at them and I go, okay, so we have to look at how you're going to season. We don't age or mature. We season. Coach Lori here. I am not anti-aging. I am all about aging gracefully. Did you know we stop making collagen at a certain age? And did you know powdered collagen has to go through your whole digestive system? So I am a big fan of Glow Liquid Collagen. It helps me age gracefully, inside and out. To order, check the link below. By the way, if you order two at the same time, free shipping. Or if you would like to be an affiliate, make a little extra cash, click the affiliate link. We don't age or mature, we season. How are your eyes going to do? Are they going to fall? Because I have to look if that wing is going to fold over later. Always keeping in mind how the eyes are going to look. The brows, I don't do the big fatty brows. If you want to bump it up because you're going out for an evening, you can add makeup. But we want to be able to have it as natural as possible. Before I did this, I was a makeup artist for 30 years and I taught people, let's balance your face. We don't want you having your eyebrows walk in the room before you or your <laughs> lips walk in the room before you. I do so many women 
that have lost eyebrows. And it's so fun to be able to give them back eyebrows because all of a sudden they go up and people just look at their eyes and they don't look at anything. The face isn't finished. So as soon as I put the eyebrows on, it takes 10 years off of them. I've had so many clients literally cry afterwards going, oh my gosh, this is what I used to look like. It is so rewarding to me. It's so fun to be able to give back youth to some of my clients that just feel too old. As you mentioned, there was kind of a bad rap. I'd seen these really bad yep. where you look at people and you're like, seriously, I was worried about the color and you were so great because you're like, no, we're going to match your hair and your skin tone. And I remember when you said that I just totally relaxed because I really wanted it done, but I was worried that it's permanent. And I get a lot of people come in with a fear factor of, I don't want black eyebrows. And I laugh going, you're a blonde. Why would I put black on your eyebrows? And I hear that so much when I'm working on somebody's eyebrows. Before we do anything, I just say, let's do eyebrows 101 and just talk about what eyebrows can do, what different techniques, because I have microblading, I have soft powder, I have effortless eyebrows, which is the combination of both, depending on the skin tone, depends on age of the skin. If it's oily skin, is it crepey skin? All these different factors are things you have to take into consideration depending on what technique that you use. Talking about educating, nine years ago, 80% of my business was microblading. Today, it's only 20%. Most people want longevity because soft powder brows literally will hold longer two to three years without having to get a color boost. As I'm working on people, we go through what technique. I have all these pictures of different shapes. I look at their face aesthetically. Do they have a wide brow. If they do, they can go longer brows. If they have a narrow brow, they have to go shorter. If they have a round face, do we do an arch? There's all different shape of faces that you have to determine what the shape of the brow. Most time I can look at somebody because I've done thousands of them. I can see their eyebrow before I even draw it on there. But as I brow map, I have like techniques. I'm a systems gal. So I'm kind of weird because I am a sales geek artist, which is kind of a very weird combination with it. I literally draw the template. Then I go, okay, what looks good on your face? Then start to work with that. I take pictures because eyes lie, but pictures never do. So sometimes look Looking at the picture, you can literally see where you need to adjust something. Once we get the design all fixed of what it's going to look like and they're happy, oh, it's about them being happy with it because they're going to be looking at their brows way longer than me. Once we've decided on the design, then the color, which is what you were talking about, I literally will paint pigment colors on their forehead in little swatches. When you put makeup on, that's the color you get. But when you do permanent makeup, you have to take into consideration the skin tone and how it's going to shift the color. I I can put taupe on one person and on me, it goes gray. On somebody else, it goes tan because of their skin tone. Rather than having somebody try to pick a color, I make it easy and say, tell me the ones you don't like. And we do by process of elimination, much easier, much less stressful. I've had the owners of a, a art gallery come in and actually the whole shop has come in. And it's so funny talking about color and hue and value, talking color. I mean, we had a blast. There's a lot of pieces to it. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. A couple of things you touched on, the importance of learning to set up a business and find finding a mentor. When I was a single mom, I wanted to go and speak. That's how I wanted to make my living because then I could go and be home most of the time, but go and make money to support my family. It was before internet. I had reached out to someone who had written a book and I said, can you mentor me? And uh, she was like, yeah, no, I, uh, no clue on how to mentor or how to help me. And I took it personal because my self-esteem was struggling after going through a divorce. I'll often think back, this is why I do what I do. I say yes. And mm -hmm. I teach. If somebody needs a mentor, they know what they want. They just don't know how to get there. We only really need to be a few steps ahead of them. When I started as a franchise owner, I was really bad at training. I could not get people to do what needed to be done. I was bad at it. I have a very strong belief that in order to be great, you got to be good. In order to be good, you got to be bad. In order to be bad, you got to be awful. In order to be awful, you have to do something. You got to start somewhere. When I started our franchise, I had won a cruise. When I came back, every bit of business that was on the books was gone. I was devastated. I called the founder of the company, who was a great mentor, Tricia. And she was very polite with me. And she said, it seems like you struggle with your training. There is a lady up in Vancouver, BC, who does video training. Why don't you go visit her and see how she does it? Somebody tells me what to do. I'm doing it. I 
went up that Tuesday. And when I called Trisha back, she goes, you already did it. I said, well, you told me to do it. So I did. Duh. And I learned how to do video training. And it's funny because I really had no intention of teaching permanent makeup. My buddy Penny was the trainer and she'd been doing it for 20 plus years. And I wasn't going to step into that spot. That was hers. About five years ago, she goes, I'm done t teaching that. You're taking it. And I'm like, really? <laughs> she goes, yeah, you're taking it on. I'm like, all right. And I still was like really nervous, but every student has said to me, I am so glad that you did. You are such a good teacher. And I just thought that goes back to my Alouette years because I'm good at beginners, taking them from the beginning up and working from there because of the business side. I have a whole video online training for it. One of the things I'm going to do, that's one of my goals this year, do a five-hour module on business for people who need to know how to start a business and what to do and how to build it. Well, I love that you said yes. Yep. You were presented with something and you said yes and you invested in yourself. I set goals for myself. Okay, I'm going to have two procedures a week. And once I was consistently doing two procedures a week, I'm going to do three procedures a week and then four. And so I gave myself numbers. What did I have to do to make sure that I had four procedures a week? What networking do I have to do to be able to get that to happen? It was very strategic in what I was going to do. I had specific goals. I want to do the consistency and then talking to people of what they did, how they did it. There was things that they were doing that I wasn't willing to do because you have to be able to know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. And you also got to be able to accept the consequences for that, that if you're not willing to do the extra stuff, well, okay, you might not make as much money, but are you happy with that decision? The goals were, and doing 15 procedures a week now is my goal. And that's generally what I do every single week. Cindy Dady O'Neill helped me with mailbox power, sending out postcards and birthday cards. Top of mind, Debbie taught me how to do a monthly newsletter. The funny part about that newsletter, meant is a beauty one. I have no idea what I'm going to say every month and it just kind of comes out. It could be about my family. It could be about the tulips I went and saw. I laugh because whatever comes out of my mouth, it's all it is, is me. And I always talk about my family and the trips I've done and where we're going. And I get like a 45% open rate on my constant contact, which is huge. It's just letting people know who you are. Be authentically you. Enjoy yourself so people will be able to enjoy themselves. You said it earlier, it's got to be an experience. Anybody who comes to my room, it's an experience. Everybody gets a hug when they leave. One of the things I see, because I teach podcasting, a lot of times people put their thing out and then they go, oh, please God, please God. And they pray. And I love that you say, I don't know how I'm going to show up, but I'm going to show up. Consistency is way more important yep. than content. The content, you can be authentically you. It's just so important to keep showing up because we're in a society right now where people are so lonely and they need to feel like they know you and trust you. Yep. The way we do that is showing up. And so when people put out a podcast and then they say, well, I'm not getting any downloads. Have you been on social media? Are you showing up every week? Are you helping people? Are you asking people what they want? Are you being of service? The consistent to social media, I did it for years. And finally, last year, I came to the point going, I don't want to do this anymore. I hired it out now. And again, that's your decisions you have to make. What are you willing to give and take? I'm willing to give up money for them to take care of me. Social media, I pay to get it done now. I got a bookkeeper. I pay to do it. It's just worth it to me for quality of life. That's such great advice because entrepreneurs, we always hear this, you're wearing a thousand hats. Yep. <laughs> I know there have been times that I've just like, been exhausted. Yep. A lot of the things we have to do, taxes, bookkeeping, aren't things we want to do. I hear this a lot. People will say, well, it's not about the money. Why not? Why not make a ton of money so you can pay someone mm -hmm. to do your social media, yep. pay a bookkeeper? You've been a successful entrepreneur for many years. And it didn't start that way. My first thing was I want a nanny for my kids and I want a housekeeper. Every January, my husband and I, New Year's Eve, we write down all the memories for the entire year. And then we write down our goals for the next year. I have four kids, but I have two batches. I have two and there's a 12 year gap and two more. When the older ones were younger, I on the goal thing, I put, I want a nanny. Well, I got the nanny for the second two kids. And I have to give kudos to my husband because this is part of the story. The mindset is, is that anything is possible. We had an accountant, but didn't have a bookkeeper because it's going to cost too much money. It wasn't until I got into Carefree Beauty that I got a bookkeeper. I kept thinking that a bookkeeper was going to cost thousands of dollars a month. Well, it doesn't. That was a big game changer for me. The other piece is you have the goals of what you want to have happen. When I got Carefree Beauty, one of the things that shifted, and I tell this story 
because this is something that my husband was very vulnerable with. When we had the other business, my husband and I were business partners. I won't go into all the details, but there was stuff that we did wrong. When it came to Carefree Beauty, when I hired Debbie Page, one of the things that I did, I said to my husband, this is my business. I no longer want to have to ask permission from you for anything that I'm going to do in this business. The decisions I make are mine. And it was the hardest thing for me to do. I mean, my husband and I have been married 46 years. I love this man. He's wonderful. He was so hurt. He was so devastated that I would do this to him. And usually he can roll with things. It took him two weeks, but this is how good my husband is. He comes back two weeks later and he said, I understand why you had to do it. And I said, why? And he says, because every time you asked me, you want to spend money on something. He says, I never once asked you, how is it going to help you? I just said, no, we can't afford it. He says, you needed me to step back. And I went, wow. That was just like an aha moment for me. When he said that, he was right. And so now when I spend money, he goes, oh, I'm so glad you're doing all that. You're just so better at it than I am. And there's no stress involved. He just loves it. That is an awesome story. Molly, you have just given us so much wisdom. It's Molly Clip. She's the owner, artist, instructor at carefree-beauty.com. And she's in Linwood, Washington. So if you're local, go get your eyebrows done. Do yourself a favor. Save yourself <laughs> hours. Exactly. Let me draw them for you. You don't have to. Two questions I want to end with. What is it you really want people to know? That anything is possible if you want it bad enough. But really think about and do the pros and cons of what you want your life to look like. You can choose to have the life that you deserve and that you want, but you have to be willing to make the sacrifices along the way. Get the training, get the mentors, talk to the people who are going to help you along the way. Don't listen to people who are naysayers. I learned years ago, don't hang around the barnyard with the turkeys if you want to soar with the eagles. Hang around the people who are smarter than you. You should be the dumbest person in the room. You should be asking questions all the time. And last, but certainly not least, what book are you reading or do you recommend? I love romance novels. John Maxwell has always been my favorite entrepreneur, uh, leader. I got to meet him once. We called me Molly McBee. I was so excited. He's always been a uh, servant leadership. I just absolutely love him. Norman Vincent Peale, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy. I don't have a college degree. I had a friend of mine who has a PhD, teaches at the University of Washington. He says, you might not have a certificate. He says, but you have a PhD in marketing. And I went, wow. That was just the best compliment he could have given me because it doesn't have to come from a school. It can come from the school of hard knocks. Somebody told me, Brian Tacey said it one day, he says, radio is bubble gum for your ears. Educate yourself. That's your university. Although I work on the radio, I listen to podcasts and books on tape to and from All the time. Yeah. The work. But what's your favorite romance book? Night in Shining Armor by Jude Devereaux. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me, Lori. This has been fun. Have you heard, if not now, when? If not you, then who? Are you being prompted to write a book, to create a podcast? Check out Leaving a Legacy at www.coachlaurie, that's coach, L-A-U-R-I-E, dot com. And let's get started on your second act now. Three things we learned from Molly. Number one, we don't age, we season. Get a mentor, ask for help, and maybe don't leap, but transition, make a plan and set goals. If you love this podcast, here's a big ask. Will you share with your friends and family? Subscribe, give us a review, and a five-star rating so that others looking to reinvent their lives will be able to get the help they're looking for. Thank you in advance.